it's, but it's just on our doorstep. We just live just up at the top of the hill, so uh -huh. it's great. And it followed it in the paper as well because we used to play on the tennis courts before it was it was just tennis courts. Oh. Never, no, never. But we've been, we get our instructions and we get watched over, so <laughs> we don't make a mess of anything. But yeah, it's uh, it's really good, it's really fascinating. Yeah. We'll go and tell the kids all about it as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're actually yes, right. Yes, yeah, we dug up bones and that further up, and now it's just a few bits of pottery down here. But it's uh, every little bit, as everybody's fascinated, every little bit comes up. But it's, it's, it's mainly this black pottery in this corner. Yeah, maybe like that. It's the black pink, you see the windows on the pottery. That's the base of it. Looks like it was used for cooking in this area. And uh -huh. there's, uh, there's a different coloured bit of pot there. so. Because they're very knowledgeable and they help and explain to us. You know. It's a nice atmosphere as well. Yes, yeah. When we yeah. find a piece, you know, uh -huh. they come and explain to us what it's what it's from and how long it's been there. And, and if somebody finds something, yeah. somewhere, they come and share it and show it to everybody. So it's quite, it's quite, yeah. quite interesting. Yeah. Worthwhile when you find something nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just digging in the soil. Yeah. And when you're actually touching it. Really touching it, it's it's interesting, isn't it? It's more it fetches it to life, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're it's being right history, beside where we live. They're yeah. daily part of their lives. Mm -hmm. Probably a bit boring. They're part of their lives, and we're finding it exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. So it is. Makes you wonder what people are going to discover about. <laughs> yeah. Living, living. <laughs> Years to come. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, again. We've been here every Saturday digging, volunteering with our son Rico who's 15 but has just gone for a sleep in the car. <laughs> um, he's only a fair weather digger. We've been in lots of the different trenches which has been really interesting. Um, my sister Tanya has been with us here most weeks. She found a, a silver coin from the 1st or 2nd century last week. Um, we have found lots of bits of pottery, but we seem to be particularly good at finding walls. I mean, walls yeah. <laughs> so I've been in a few of the bigger trenches where we've been doing a lot of heavy digging. Uh, a lot of the walls are around, so that's where we've been digging from. And myself and Janet were fortunate last week to be working on the pebble mosaic, which is really pretty. Um, and we just were really thrilled to have been part of it, really. And local history as well I think is really important but the reason that we brought our son more than anything is I think it's really important for kids to get an understanding of history but to actually be active in history as well and take part so it's been really good. Rab's not from Carlisle but, but we are so we're really passionate about seeing what's here and trying to get it preserved really. So. Yeah, I do a lot of work for the Friends of the Turkish Bath, so we're trying to tie it in very much about Carlisle's history of hygiene, bathing. Oh, yeah. It's all part of Carlisle history, which yeah. is really interesting to us. So, And different parts and different periods as well, which I think is really... Um, well, it, it's all linked. It's surprising how it's all linked. I'll put a couple more of these in. Uh, I've volunteered for three weeks but on my uh, off time I've actually been coming down after work so I finish at work at one o'clock in my normal job which is a civil servant uh, and I've been able to come down because I live quite close by so I've been doing afternoons as well of course it's, it's, it's my hometown it's something that nobody knew before uh, they were going to move and did the test pits that was here so it's a great opportunity to come down and dig Never. This is my absolute first time. I'm a, I'm, I've never really volunteered for anything of this ilk at all. Um, 
but I thought with Covid and things that have been happening it was just a real a real experience to get back into meeting people and doing something that I, I found I absolutely love, thoroughly enjoy. Personally it has to be the Bourne Needle and Bourne All. I found in um because I was over in the drains, um, which is a great place to find uh, historical artifacts because everything seems to get washed down there. But it was a, a fully intact bone needle about that big, and it was used on heavy clothing. So they knew that there was uh, one pieces and then they passed the needle through. So somebody in this bathhouse had been either repairing or making clothing and lost their sewing kit, and it's that ephemeral. 1,800 years ago somebody was doing something. Gold coins and things like that are, are, are nice, but that personal touch, that and um, seeing all of the tiles with like dog prints, deer prints, people's footprints, it's, that happened on the A day. That's definitely, d somebody's done something to that. Amazing. I also did uh, quite a lot of the um, walk-arounds and that was something I explained. I said, no, the, these people are no different to us. They are having, in, in this area, they are having a spa day. Now, we can all understand what a spa day is. This is a place that you would meet and greet and relax, do business deals. You know, we do that now. We were able to show the different stratas of um, people by just looking at the gaming chips they have. You know, it's an old scrappy bit of tile in one trench. It's a lovely ivory bone uh, gaming piece here, and it's a, it's a, a chipped bit of samium ware in another. So you can see where people are um, and understanding who they are. You know, fantastic. You know, some days are a little bit tough, but you always know that there's going to be an end result. There's going to be something there that is going to, in that day, there's going to be something that sparks your interest and makes your heart flutter a little bit, like that boat needle or a coin, or just meeting some really good people. You know, that's that's another thing that's really come from this, just meeting folk, uh, especially after the, the lockdown and sort of being in our houses. It's nice to get out. You never know what's under your feet. You really don't. And you could just be digging in your back garden, and even if it's something from Victorian times, that's somebody's life that's gone in the ground, and just picking that up, that little piece, gives you an ephemeral link back to your past. And that's what it is, you know, there's different layers, but we've all lived in Carlisle, so we're all what, just one big family of people who, who, who live local, so we're all local. We're just separated by time, that's the only problem. I, um, I seem to have developed a real knack for barrowing, which is one of the, <laughs> one of the not the, the least exciting things, but I think it's teamwork and I enjoy teamwork and I'm meeting people. Um, yeah, I think this, this it's been great fun. It was worse on Tuesday, but I, I actually I think probably won a bit of a, a bit of a prize for being the wettest, muddiest person. And someone took a picture. One of the professional, semi-professional sort of photographers took a picture, and it went on some Facebook group or other um, as, as a muddy person. So that was nice. <laughs> That's great. No, I'm a, I'm a doctor. I work in the NHS. I've worked in the NHS for about 35 years. But I've always loved history, so I apply, I've applied and I'm starting a postgraduate history course. Don't even have an, a GCSE in history, nothing at all. But I've always loved it. We're trying to find this, this sand layer and scrape away anything that's loose. Um, and then working backwards so that we, don't, we take our dirt with us. That's the idea, and don't leave too many footy, um, muddy footprints. Um, but each, when we finish one step, then um, Jerry, who's in charge of the trench, or Frank, will give us some guidance as to what else we do next. I think 
think Faye found something uh, of metal that went into a special finds bag. If it goes into a special finds bag, that's very exciting. It's a blade. It's a blade, right. And Lawrence and David found a coin and shared it around, which is really exciting. So even, it doesn't really matter whether it's you that uncovers it, but you, get, you share the joy. You could almost feel the effort and imagine the effort of keeping the Roman baths heated. It's obviously a very high status building, but there were, must have been a lot of, I, I don't know, junior soldiers or maybe even slaves, I, I don't really know, who had to keep those, stoke those fires. And, and that's an interesting thought. All that, all that sweat, all that effort, all those years ago. Really helpful is hearing other people's interpretation, the, the archaeologists' interpretation, because they know what things mean much better than us. And, and, we, and we have first hand, we hear first hand from them, and that's very exciting. usually a primary school teacher um, but yeah it's my first day here on the dig and luckily I'm quite on the last day so really excited. I've always been really interested in history and archaeology um, and then working as a teacher I've taken the children on lots of, of the Roman sites around Cumbria so it, it's made me want to get involved as well um, and then I saw that it was advertised here and I thought oh, I've got to come along and, and, and do that and it's great so yeah. So lots to tell the the uh, children when you get back in the oh, classroom. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm really excited yeah. to tell them, yeah. show them some pictures of what's been going on. Yeah. I'm originally from Cheltenham, um, and then I've moved up here, and then uh, yeah, we've been living up here about four or five years now. It's just all been absolutely amazing to actually see a live dig going on. I don't think I've ever seen something like this, you know, only on time team on the telly. Seeing the finds um, inside, that's been great. The things that have been found here, um, that they're putting back together and washing, like the pots and little pieces of jewellery. and um, So that's been really exciting to actually see it come from here. No, it's massively exceeded what I'd hoped. The the people made it as well. That's been a you know important part of this. Exhausted. We've got some incredible finds and the exhibition should be spectacular. You know, we've confirmed the building's even bigger than we thought. We found a whole new phase of building we didn't even know existed. Um, just the interest is generated. came to a natural end because we're so deep we can't actually physically safely dig down anymore. Um, anyone got any questions? How far do you think it could get to? Don't know, I, I thought that would be end. So, <laughs> you know, we've got BT cables, street preservation orders, road, so it's a natural end. It's already 40 metres. Um, and uh, when we're walking past, if we just walk past the hypercore system, that's something you don't see. This is another one of these main walls of the southern bathhouse. But you can see here it's been chopped through by this curving wall. This curving wall is a very late modification for backhouse where they've um, they're still being used in the backhouse but they're losing the technology and the skills to keep it functioning. Especially after the couple of rubbish few years everyone's had, it's just been just a joy to work with people who've never done this before. That's the biggest thing for me really. Forgetting about the archaeology is just the, the community we built up. We've been Carlisle for 30 years. So. so it's lovely doing a job on my doorstep. And I'm passionate about the city and its history. Live and breathe it. So anything to help raise Carlisle's profile. 
opportunity we all have to take. It doesn't often get, you know, shouted about, even the people here. It's, you know, it's a lovely place and it's got an incredible history. I've loved it. It's been really exciting. Um, we found a, a few bones and bits of pots and lots of other things that we found but we have no idea what they are but we just put them in the seed trays and let the experts decide. So this is this is the, the wall that we are trying to find the rest of. Mm -hmm. We're trying to find which way it goes. Um, Steve was saying that this there was some kind of pit he thinks here, so we're not sure which way the wall would go. So we'll keep digging until we find a wall and we find lots of interesting things on the way. And they're very enthusiastic about what they do. Yeah, very friendly. Yeah, yeah. Because we we don't know what we're doing at all. Um, they've been very helpful. It's been great. Really nice. Friendly bunch. For me, I think because we we've lived just very close. When I walk down here, I will know what is underneath here once they fill in the the area. And having that more of appreciation of the history that was just around the corner from where I live. Um, to come and look at all the artifacts that have been found, but yeah, kind of think about the, the people that, that touched those artifacts, that touched that pot, that, that lived with those jewels. I mean, there was one lady today, she found like a hairpin and I was just thinking, you know, what, what lady wore that hairpin? What was she like? What was she doing? Um, and it, and it's, it's lovely that she was using a hairpin to, to make herself look beautiful. And it's just that there's no sort of difference to them and us. So, um, so yeah, when you come to the exhibition, just think about the, the Romans that, that walked here before you.